just to come back to some stuff about you, there's only a few more questions here, really, but um, these can be yes, these can be yes, no, yes, no, uh, and uh, okay. questions, I suppose. Uh, just a couple. Yeah. Musical instruments. You know, have you ever played any? I've had a piano, went to a summer school to have piano lessons, didn't persevere. I've got a, I've got a Yamaha acoustic guitar upstairs that Terry Murphy gave me years ago. Different people have, I, I, I don't think I got the patience. Okay. So what the about, answer's no. All right. What about songwriting? Uh, yeah, I've, I've tried to do that. I, I, I could probably do it lyrically. I could probably do that. Yeah, I bet you could. I could do that lyrically if I if I was with somebody who was hold a bit of a stop. Yeah. 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 I could do I could do the lyrics, but if I was with somebody that had the propensity to construct the man, a bit like, you know, Elton John does this, but Bernie Torpy does that, you know. Um, I'll unearth it, do it. God knows I'd I yeah. But I I I I'd, I'd have a crack at that. Maybe I have to have a word with Keo. Yeah, well, I have a word with Keo. Yeah, that's 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 good advice. Yeah. Um, uh, I was going to ask you as well about uh, Keo. Would love that actually. Um, I wonder if there's anything in this at all. I, I bet there's not. But just I, I just thought about it earlier today. So I'm a I'm I'm a lecturer in a university, and I'm I'm a front man in the anonymous iconoclast, right? Mm -hmm. And you 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 were a teacher, and you're a front man with Dan Set. Is that yeah? Is there something in that you know naturally leads you towards? Yeah, well, I, I've never ever been nervous. Hmm. You know, yeah, if, if yeah. I've never been nervous, you know, well, you, you, know, you get teachers; they don't like doing assemblies. Hmm. They, they're comfort; they're in their comfort zone in the classroom, but they're not necessarily the most confident conversers. No. Standing in front of big crowds of parents or kids in school never ever bothered me. I remember my very first lesson in Cantonian, September nineteen seventy four. Mm. And I, you know, I remember Dave Thomas there. He said, no, don't worry when you go in there. I said, Dave, I'm not at all worried. I just know I can do it. I won't bother at all. So, no, being in front of the crowd, I, the, two things are, the two things are similar to each other, aren't they? In as much as you're putting on a bit of a performance, whether you're teaching or whether you're singing. Um, I'm just lucky it's never phased me, really, in that sense. Yeah. I'll tell you what, Paul, this is an interesting one, funny one for you. Um, I think it was the first time I'd met you, although we didn't meet very much. And you were playing at a gig with Kia with Dan Set. Uh, uh, and, I, and, I, and, I, and you were doing a sound check. And I thought, this guy's a bit cocky, isn't he? You know? Because <laughs> you were really controlling the whole thing. Yeah. And now I know you. you yeah. know, I, 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 I think you're a lovely guy. But the first time I saw you, I, I honestly didn't get that that impression. No, I can imagine. Yeah, I can imagine. Probably a lot of people think that. You know, so there are some people, take Terry Murphy, who used to be in our band. You won't find anybody. And he's such a, I, he's a, I gave him a lift the other night. He's a great, 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 great guy and a fantastic talent musician. He could probably yeah. get, he could get a guitar or put him in front of a piano, in front of a pub full of people at nine o'clock in the morning played till nine o'clock at night and he wouldn't repeat a song. He's so knowledgeable about music. Mm. And, uh, but you won't get a bad word said about people from anyone. He, everyone just loves him. Some people are like that. Other people are like Marmite. And I'm like Marmite. So get over it. <laughs> so I'm, <laughs> I'm used to that, yeah. Well, I think you could give people the wrong impression, you know, because I, I, maybe, maybe the point you made just now when you said it, it resonated with me straight away, you know. You have an innate confidence, and you know you're not you're not kind of you don't suffer from uh, I don't know shyness at all. Really, you just kind of get on with it, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. So with with the teaching stuff, which obviously you, you know there were a couple of great great bits in that book again, without going into detail now. I really love that bit towards the end when you're talking about giving your kind of you know farewell speech. Oh, yeah. uh, it's not nicely written it really kind of le leads into it it's almost like something out of a movie where it kind of leads into it you don't actually you don't need to see it you know it's it's, it's, mm. it's, it's all it's all in the build-up you know but um also as well as um the more kind of academic stuff that you taught you also uh, got involved uh, heavily with football and yeah, we talked yeah. about tony Woolway earlier it was a decent football yeah player, good by football the way, yeah. yeah and uh, i mean he talks really highly of, of you um oh, that's nice. as a teacher 
and you know he said you went on food football trips together and yeah yeah well, it, it, how how much do, how how pleasurable and what your kind of recollections are on that kind I loved of it. teaching yeah i lived it i always say shouldn't even my days in cantonian i always look back at that and say i was lucky i had good teachers because the kids taught me a lot i took the football team from the time i got there and oh, we yeah. had some we had some great players tony was in that in that side we won everything and uh, and Tony played for Cardiff Schools for me for a while because I ran Cardiff Schools. Mm. Um, and then when I went to Cantonian, uh, when I moved to, to Radha, um, well, when I was in Cantonian, we had some very good players. Some of um, Tony's contemporaries, they were they were at Nottingham Forest when, when Brian Clough was there. And uh, I remember going up to stay with a friend in Loughborough so I popped over to see these guys in um, Paul Miller and Chrissy Guy, their names were. Um, Paul Miller played for Wales um, in the same side as Kevin Ratcliffe. So when Kevin Ratcliffe was a schoolboy, that's, we're going back to the 1976, it must have been. Yeah. But I remember visiting, going over to Nottingham Forest to see them and Brian Clough was there. And he said, good boys, yo. those Welsh boys, good boys, he was saying, you know. And... Uh, I just loved it. I used to travel up when Paul played for, 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 for Wales against England. I went up with his mum and dad up to York. You know, they picked me up at five in the morning and we drove all the way up there. I, I loved it. It, it, was, it was good for me um, because it gave you another It gave you another in with the kids. You didn't do it because of that. And these were the days where football matches were played on Saturday mornings. So you'd be out on, you'd be out on, on a Friday night and yeah. they'd be my dad get me up. You see, you've got football this morning, and yeah, have to drive in, you're a bit hungover and a bit groggy. Yeah, do all the kit, bring all the bring all the kit home to, to wash, give the, my mum to um or, or or my grandmother then it would have been to, to to put in the washing machine. And I just loved that whole involvement with it. And yeah. um and and I liked in those back in those days, there wasn't as much red tape to get through. So if, for example, you wanted to take a, a, a tour, you didn't have to fill in God knows how many forms. And thank God there was no internet, so there was no Google. There was nothing to give you. They're meant to be labour-saving devices, but they, they're useful for this. Oh, my God, do they create work, you know? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, uh, that Lyndon Lynch, who I mentioned, he was teaching up in, Har up in North London. In Harlow, he was teaching. And uh, he, I arranged a little football tour, and I took my school team. Do you remember a footballer played for Cardiff, Tarky Mikalev? Yeah, of course, yeah. Tarky was, he came up with me. Was he one of your lads? No, he was in Moston. He, he played for Cardiff schools when I ran Cardiff schools. Okay, yeah, good player. Oh, amazing. He was like a Should have like done fantastic. much more. Should have achieved so much more. Yeah, but, yeah, he should have gone. To, when Spurs wanted him, Harold Joy, the coach, wanted Tarky to go to Spurs. But he yeah. was convinced, he was firmly convinced he wanted to stay in Cardiff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think he should have gone, but who knows what would have come. But he came, hmm. and I remember we went up to London, and Lyndon, who was my contact, uh, he'd coached us. I think he put us, he, he got a side for us, and they recently won the English, I think they won the English Schools Cup, this side. Hmm. We went up there, we, we, we hammered them. But we had my school team, but we had Tarky. We had another guy from Glendaru, I think he lives in Australia now, called Johnny Leach. All these people would be 50 now. They, they probably, yeah. you know, but um, so you could organise things like that beautifully. And then when I went to Radha, I carried on doing the football. And that's when I started doing, I carried on with Cardiff schools. And, um, you know, we, that's Craig Bellamy was the captain of the side. I used to. Really? Yeah. When what, we was went he, what, the was, what was he like as a kid? Fantastic footballer. He was, what, he, what was, was, he, he, was he was hot. What was his attitude like, Paul? What was his attitude like? As he was kid? determined. Right. He was very, you know, um, and his, and his, uh, I remember his dad, Doug, very well. He, lovely guy. Lovely, mm. lovely guy. Um, he, um, there was this one occasion where we had a rule, you had to, you had to train or you could, didn't play. And yeah. he was with Norwich at the time and he was, I think he'd gone for a game or something. And uh, of course, we were, but when he came, I said, well, you weren't training, so you have to go on the bench. And he obviously wasn't very happy about that. But the ref didn't turn up, and the person who had to do referee the game, the only qualified ref was Craig's dad. Okay. So even though I, I dropped him, or he dropped himself by not being in, wouldn't be fair to either the kids, would it? So mm. he, he, 
So even though he he was dropped, and he went on he went on the bench. I think he came on later in the game. But his dad was that sort of guy. He said, "I'll ref." And then when we won the Welsh Cup, Craig scored the winner. So did, I, I, mean, I don't know what whether you you would say this. Did did you sort of think then this lad's gonna you know? Did you think he had? A oh, big if future? anyone was gonna make, he was gonna make. It was him, yeah. He was only a little lad, but I remember seeing. Mm. I think I can't remember if we were in Bristol or Swindon for one of these mm. regional cup things, and we had to drop him off the stage and he'd get off the bus, you know, on his own. No, nope, you know, but as a young lad, well, 13, 14, 14 maybe, with his little bag, and he'd get on the train, he never looked back, and off he'd go to Norwich. Wow. Well, you know, if I had to go to Norwich this afternoon, I think, oh God, got to all a bit there, yeah, give me a bit yeah. of a. Bit of a schlep to get up there, but no fair play to him. He, he you know, he deserved. He, he des- you know, he deserved it. I think. Um, but they were a good. We had a good side then, and I, and and then I, my my rather school side. Then another, we uh, we won the Welsh Cup. We won the Welsh Cup. So, I love doing extra things with kids. You know, I used to run the chess team. I used to take. Um, in, I I took uh, international expeditions to. South America, well, Costa Rica, last to go, Kenya, yeah, uh, uh, Peru, Ecuador. I I just love doing things like that, extra things. And it was, um, I think, it was easier then. I think towards the end of my career. If anyone says schools are not exam factories now, I think they're lying. Hmm. Since the since the creation of the league tables, because now kids can't afford to meet miss a maths lesson. They can't afford to miss you know miss anything and it's it's all about this a star to c percentage and that and i think at school a lot of schools suffer rather was a fan, rather fantastic school for music drama you know the art department there oh, just phenomenal but all at p department fantastic p department hard working guys there hmm. you know teams in every sport at every age group yeah. And yet, their time is being squeezed because of the pressures, the academic pressures. Yeah, you know. So, um, I'm sort of, I lived my forty odd years teaching, but I'm glad I'm not there now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I get all of that. I mean, I, we've got, I've got like five, ten minutes or so to ask you just a few things. But um, did you, did you, did you play? This is this wasn't one of them. Did you play in? Uh, um, teachers versus uh, school children matches. <laughs> when I was in Cantonia, we did. The teachers Re- seem to enjoy that, you know. Oh, I remember. <laughs> Get it sorted out in the pitch. We used you? to have rugby games against them, yeah. and we did have in Rather. To be fair, we we had a good staff cricket team. Well, I don't think the cricket was particularly good, but we had a. Uh, it was a very well run. We had. A good friend of mine, colleague of mine, Nick Stenner, he kept it going for years and years and years. But, but not against the kids. But funny enough, no, that cricket tech team now has got as many ex-pupils playing for it as it has teachers who teach in the school. Yeah. Um, but when I was in Cantoni, we had rugby games, staff yeah. against the uh, staff against the kids. Oh, One, went on at the bottom of the scrum, was never topped off. Out off the pitch. Well, thank God I wasn't in the scrum. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I went, I went to Glantaff High School before it went Welsh, and I was, I, I played in a couple of those matches. There were some interesting incidents, but there we are. Um, during during the during the lockdown, one thing um, I, I I really uh, admired and enjoyed um, was the fact that for quite a long time, day after day after day, you'd you'd find a positive story. And put it out there, and you'd associate it with a piece of music. You know, was that yeah, kind of? I guess it was consciously your way of trying to lift the spirits, was it? Yeah. Well, in the lockdown, I remember my my, my girlfriend Karen. Um, she bought me this lovely shirt the year before last um, for for my birthday, hmm. and I just glibly said, "And I love I love clothes. I got I love vintage clothing and going rummaging around charity shops and stuff." And uh, I mean, I could open a shop with this stuff. I, why I've got all this stuff up there? I know you must have a lot. Is anybody's guess? But I, mm. uh, I said to Catherine, I said, um, uh, oh, if only there was somewhere, somewhere we could go to wear it. I said, we well, haven't got to be going anywhere special. That was on November the first. She said that. 
So on November the 2nd, I said to her, starting today, I'm not going to wear the same clothes for a year. I'm going to wear different, something different every year. Wow. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to put it on Facebook. It, started, it was a joke really, for my family. And I put a piece of music on. So I did that. And I, I got to be honest, I was enjoying doing it. But oh my God, I was glad when it finished. Because I, <laughs> I was finding, you know, bits. I was digging at bits of music. I thought, I haven't heard this record. I haven't heard this record since top rank in 1969 or something. I tell you what, I'd make a fantastic playlist, wouldn't I? Oh, God, yeah. But I've got them all on my phone. Yeah, on my, yeah. I've got a list of all the songs yeah. I put out. And I I think I, I may have repeated one or two songs, maybe Marvin Gaye once or twice. Mm. But I um, I enjoyed doing that. And it was, interestingly, I got quite a, not all the time, it was always the same clutch of people who would always comment and like this. But mm. then you get people saying, oh, I haven't heard this for ages. Yeah. And then the odd time would come around and it'd be loads of comments on, on Facebook. So, yeah, it was quite, it was just a nice way of being positive, really. But, uh, uh, I mean, also um, filtered through to, you know, you obviously have a love of style and, you know, you're always very, look at you today, you're very smart, you've got time, very debonair, you know, and you you, gotta, <laughs> you, you, you do, you, you, you always um, make make the effort. I, I never have, I never have. All, so all the chat, uh, but it's not an effort, see? Yeah. I don't think of it as an effort. Hmm. So... That's the, I don't think of it as an effort. I, I um, I'm not enjoy kidding. It, obviously, you love doing. Yeah, it. well, I don't. Even, I don't even know if I consciously enjoy it. I, okay. If if I go somewhere, like I'm going up to Marlow next weekend with uh, Karen for the weekend, mm -hmm. and I know there be there's a lot of expensive shops, and I don't go in any. I'll go in all the charity shops, and I guarantee I'll probably come home with something that I don't need, yeah. but I, but I like it. 